Now time for members' statements. And over here, Toronto St. Paul's. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Yesterday I had a late show encouraging the government to state clearly they did not support Faith Goldie. They refused. Instead, the Ford government provided a canned speech denouncing hate with just enough of MPP King Vaughan's familial immigrant story to deflect from the topic at hand. Today, we asked the Minister of Education and the Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services, two directly responsible for our most vulnerable of Ontarians, to denounce Faith Goldie by name. They didn't. Very recently, however, our Premier has mentioned her name in a sentence. I personally say thank you. That is a good step. Now it's time for the government to go a step further and state that they do not support her using our Premier's name or likeliness in any of her campaign communications. My, my residents, like Leba Spring, Jeff Farrell and others, are receiving Faith robocalls, which mention our Premier's names. Faith Goldie believes in bringing back Tavis, Carding, the school resource programs. We need our Minister of Education and our Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services to stop these sorts of actions before they even begin. It's bad enough that the Minister of Labour's senior policy advisor is allegedly married to Faith Goldie's sister, who is a key player on her political campaign. On behalf of the people in my riding, I say let's disassociate our Premier completely with Faith Goldie. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Brampton South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I would like to take this opportunity today uh, to talk about a great event that happens uh, every year uh, in Ontario. Today at 8 a.m., the 18th Canadian Police and Peace Officers Memorial Ride uh, began uh, to uh, from the police college uh, this earlier this morning. Over the last 17 years. Police and peace officers from around Ontario have participated in a 750-kilometer bike ride in honour of police and peace officers who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Under the leadership of members of the Niagara Regional Police and with the support of the Ontario Provincial Police, Peel Regional Police, Ottawa Police Service, Toronto Police Service, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, Durham Regional Police, Hamilton Police Service, Kingston Police Service, Waterloo Regional Police and York Regional Police. The Canadian P uh, Police Memorial uh, Ride to Remember has grown to include 170 police and P uh, peace officer cyclists uh, from 15 different law enforcement agencies. This ride is also important because uh, it gives us a unique opportunity of community engagement with the public and enhances the legitimacy of policing with the public. Uh, recently, the Attorney General also had a great opportunity to show her support for this uh, at a recent barbecue held by the York Regional Police. Uh, thanks to the generous support of Canadian Tire, Mo uh, Motorola Solutions and Bulk, uh, Bulk Barn Food and Limited, over £25,000 uh, pounds will be donated uh, to support Canadian police officers. Uh, sorry, $25,000 will be donated to support Canadian Police uh, Canadian Police Officers Memorial Fund. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Niagara Centre. Thank you, Speaker. I recently met with staff from the Hotel Du Shaver, a health and rehabilitation centre in my riding. Since 2007, they've been fighting for a planning grant to expand the facility with 65 additional beds. The Shaver works collaboratively with the Niagara Health System to optimize patient flow in order to alleviate pressure on the system, keeping patients out of long-term care. Rehabilitation services optimize a patient's ability to live independently at home and reduce their length of stays in our hospitals. Mr. Speaker, my father was a victim of hallway medicine. After suffering from a stroke, he was transferred to the wrong hospital and experienced inadequate care. His condition only began to improve once he was admitted to the shaver. My father's case is not an outlier. This is the experience of countless people across Niagara. The Shaver is the only rehab hospital in the region, despite having the third largest aging population in Canada, and we must be prepared to meet their needs. The Shaver was successful when the province announced a $500,000 planning grant this past May. 
They've been in the dark on the status of this grant since the new government took office and need to know whether or not they can expect the money so that they can begin planning for years to come. Mr. Speaker, expanding investment into rehabilitation centres like the Shaver provides a multifaceted policy solution that fits into the government's stated goals and objectives. I would urge the government to review this file and complete the final steps in ensuring health care and patient needs are prioritized in Niagara by the following through and providing this much needed grant. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. Member for Chatham, Kent Leamington. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise in the House today to commend all the members in the legislature that took the time to attend the 2018 International Plowing Match in Pancor. The IPM is the largest outdoor event of its kind in North America. Hundreds of acres of fertile farmers' fields are transformed into a tented city with temporary streets, entertainment stages, a rodeo, the competitive plowing fields, and many other features. It was also great to see so many farmers, organizations, and volunteers participating from my riding of Chatham, Kent, and Leamington. This event would not have been possible without the time and commitment of all those involved in making the 2018 International Plowing Match the success that it was. The competition for the Ontario Queen of the Furrow is one of the key events in the IPM every year. On behalf of our government caucus, I would like to take the opportunity to congratulate the 2018-2019 Ontario Queen of the Furrow, Derek Nada from Tavistock, Ontario. I know our Minister of Agricultural, Food and Rural Affairs, the Honourable Ernie Hardiman, is proud to have the Queen of the Furrow from Tavistock in Oxford County. We are confident that she will represent Oxford and Ontario well. Also, thank you to Kaylee Donaldson from Walton, Ontario, for serving as the 2017-18 Queen of the Furrow, having represented the Halton region. Each year, contest, uh, contestants participate in many activities and events that ultimately decide the winner. Judging has previously been uh, based on their performance in areas such as plowing ability, appearance and deportment, an interview, a speech, an impromptu speech. And I know, Speaker, there's many more things that I could say, but we are looking forward to seeing Derek Anana at rural event expos and banquets across the province and throughout every this year <laughs> thank you member statements the member for waterloo thank you very much so last thursday afternoon students at waterloo collegiate institute walked out of class to protest the pc government's cancellation of the truth and reconciliation commission curriculum writing sessions and their move to revert back to the 1998 health and physical education curriculum. Protest is an important part of the democratic process, and I was proud to see youth in my region standing in solidarity with the estimated 40,000 students who spoke out against the government actions they disagree with. Students from WCI made their own signs that said, you are hurting our futures. Move forwards, not backwards, and we, the students, do not consent. Students also signed petitions calling on the government to keep the 2015 K-8 curriculum in place. And I, met the, I had the opportunity to meet the organizers Garima, Teddy and Marai the day after the protest. One of the organizers told me that they suffered while being taught a curriculum that didn't include content on mental health, consent and LGBTQ plus issues because she wasn't taught this. She didn't know that what she was experiencing was so common. They told me that they are advocating for the students of the future. They want better for them. They were eloquent, intelligent, and thoughtful young people who care about equity, education, and progress. These students are showing us the way forward, and it's clear that with young people like them, our province's future is bright and inclusive. What this government, means to un what this government needs to understand is that you are wrong and the students are right. Member statements. The member for Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good, reliable medical care should be accessible to everyone. It's not something that should only be available to people within driving distances of the GTA or the Ottawa area. Many residents in my hometown of Sault Ste. Marie and across Northern Ontario often have to travel great distances in order to get access to the care they need, and a lot of the time doing so at their own expense. I'm very happy to report today, Mr. Speaker, that Sioux Area Hospital has received a combined $4.5 million 
in local donations alone over the past few weeks to help fund an expansion of our uh, cardiac care unit. And this will allow Suites and those in surrounding areas to get access to the care they need without having to travel great lengths in order to receive it. I really want to recognize Dale Harrison, and Dale Harrison is a person who was born and raised in Sault Ste. Marie, but left the Sioux to do great things in personal business career, and although does not live in the city, donated $3 million to the Sioux Area Hospital for this. Uh, the Dr. Lou and May Lucanda Charitable Foundation, and Dr. Lou uh, was such a historic figure and did so much in Sault Ste. Marie, donated $1 million, and our local board staff, uh, the um, volunteers Sioux Area Hospital Foundation, uh, have donated another $500,000 in order to make this a reality. I want to thank these uh, individuals and their groups for all the work they have done to help bring quality access to health care to Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. Um, we all know that if something goes wrong, you have an accident, you come upon somebody who is sick or hurt, or your house is on fire, what do you do? You dial 911. And then 911 answers and say uh, fire, police, or ambulance, and they dispatch whatever is needed. But this, Speaker, although we teach all of our kids in the school that if you need help, you dial 911, this is not true for most of the people I represent. For us, if you want uh, the police, you dial 888-310-1122. If you want an ambulance, you dial 877-351-2345. Unless you live south of the uh, watershed, then you dial 705-673-1117. If you want fire, you dial 705-235-1306. The programs are there. The ambulance will come. The police will come, but not through 911. It is time to change this. Everybody expect that if you dial 911, you're not going to get this number is not in service. But if you come in my riding, this is what you will get. We had tons of tourists. We had a beautiful summer in Nickel Belt and most of the Northeast. Tons of tourists. Many of them discovered that in their horror. I had Stan and Helena Snyder. Uh, Stan had a heart attack. He on July 5th, he dialed 911 just to be told that. Uh, 911 was not in service. This has to change. Everybody needs access to 911 services, no matter where you are in Ontario. Thank you. Member Statements. Member for Mississauga East, Cooksville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my statement is in regards to how our constituent office and uh, our institutions can collaborate with each other to provide a better uh, service to our residents. Uh, Mississauga East Cooksville is, is a very mature and established community where many seniors live. Home care services are provided to support independent living and is a fiscally responsible way in delivering health care services. Uh, Mr. Speaker, a, uh, a constituent of mine, uh, Bieta, uh, she is a full-time working daughter that has an elderly father living at home. Her father is mentally alert but physically incapable of reaching the washroom in times. He is receiving home care three times a, a day, but uh, the standard of care was not up to the mark. So Pieta, uh, one day, uh, she, she reached out to, to my office, and being one of uh, lucky ones having a very flexible boss who allows her to go home and fill in the gaps in her father's uh, care. But there is so much, uh, Mr. Speaker, a person can do. She is a working full-time, taking care of her father full-time after work, and doing the work the home care providers were supposed to do. Becoming desperate, she started knocking on doors. Nothing was uh, being done until uh, she came to, to my office. We were able to facilitate a meeting with Lynn, addressing the key issues head on. What resulted, Mr. Speaker? The link changed the healthcare provider. Bieta is now extremely happy, and this again, once again, I just want to show that how the office, uh, constituent office, and these institutions can collaborate and provide better services to our residents. Thank you. Very much. Member statements. The member for Cambridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, a dear friend of mine, a friend of my husband's as well, and he's also my campaign chair. 
Ronald Ledley Dancy, also known as Ron, passed away on August 31st at the Grand River Hospital with his wife Carolyn and daughter Janet at his side after a lengthy battle with myelodysplastic syndrome. Ron was born September 25th in 1936 in Toronto and raised in Pickering Beach, Ontario. His early career was in the automotive field. He was a licensed mechanic, and for so many years he owned and operated Dancy Calder Motors Limited and Kanko Collision Centres in Toronto and Markham. He also owned and operated a local newspaper, the Markham Unionville Times. He served as a ward councillor, regional councillor, and deputy mayor of Markham, Ontario from 1978 to 1985. He moved to Cambridge in 1985, where he owned and operated Morrison's Meatpackers. He retired in 2001. Ron Dancy was a long-standing member of the federal CPC and provincial PC party. He was a current VP of both the federal and provincial riding associations. He served as president of the federal Cambridge CPC EDA multiple times and also provincially as well. As mentioned, he was my campaign chair and Gary Goodyear's campaign manager in the last federal election. He was the backbone of Cambridge conservative politics. His involvement goes back to helping to plan the original meeting between the PC Party of Canada and the Alliance that occurred, occurred in Cambridge to discuss merging. Ron, you will be missed. <clears throat> May you rest in peace. Thank you very much. That concludes our time for member statements.